Incredible moment um, to be here together to celebrate what God is up to in the church, in Susan's life, and absolutely thrilled that y'all are here to celebrate this moment. Um, could not be a more special evening uh, for the church, and thrilled y'all are here. Just a few um, quick announcements. Um, we have restrooms down the hall on your left, if you've not been to St. Stephen's before. Um, the offering plate is outside in the narthex, but do not, you're not leaving here without supporting Susan and her ministry, so know that. So um, we will not be passing it, but hope that y'all will support generously so she can get off to a great start doing God's work um, in the church. And third, that we're in a kind of a, a gray area um, in, in terms of this pandemic, and, and one of the things that we've decided at least right now at St. Stephen's is when there's congregational singing, um, we will wear a mask, and so for this service, ask that you do wear a mask, even though you, there are signs that say they're preferred on campus. Um, it seems like there's still a lot of uncertainty, and that is the, the, what we have arrived at here, and, and ask y'all to follow that as well. Glad y'all are here, um, and we'll begin with our opening hymn, verses 1 and 3 of Christ has Made the Sure Foundation.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Has she been selected in accordance with the canons of this church, and do you believe her manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you that she has satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe her to be qualified for this order. Susan, will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship? of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so. And I solemnly declare that I do believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God and to contain all things necessary to salvation. And I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Episcopal Church. I'm gonna ask you to sign that little solemn declaration on the table. lay witness, someone will. Please stand. <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Susan Oakes for ordination to the Sacred Order of Deacons. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, Come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Susan be ordained a deacon? It is. Will you uphold her in this ministry? We will. In peace, then, let us pray to the Lord. One God. 
Spirit of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of your church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve you in a true and godly life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Glenda, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for truth, and may thirst after righteousness. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Susan, chosen deacon in your church, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That she may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, she may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity of freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief but eternal life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Stephen and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. 
your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 119 responsively by full verse. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, and your righteousness preserve my life. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. A dispute arose among the disciples as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the young and the leader, like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the true and living Holy One who made us for love, who saved us by love, and who loves us still. Amen. Amen. Just about a year and a half ago, in September 2019, in fact, I attended a conference in Denver for leaders of an international organization called Contemplative Outreach, which encourages the teaching and practice of centering prayer. One of the speakers during that conference talked about new ways to facilitate communication in an organization that large with leaders all over the country and in other countries as well when face-to-face -face meetings were difficult to arrange. She talked about a way to get together online instead and you might have guessed it, called Zoom. She announced that she would be leading one of the breakout sessions on Zoom for those who are interested. Well, it certainly wasn't on, on the top of my list as far as interests go, so I chose something else to attend, although to this day, I really can't remember what it was. Meanwhile, those who chose to listen to her certainly made the right choice. For just a few months later, most centering prayer groups were meeting on Zoom. Zoom was part of everyone's vocabulary, both as a noun, an adjective, and a verb, and certainly part of everyone's day. A vital tool that has kept us together during these times of separation. Just about a year and a half ago, St. Stephen's, this amazing parish that has such a heart for outreach and pastoral care, was continuing to live out the words you've all heard from the back of the nave each Sunday, to go out from this place to serve God, to live in God's love wherever God takes you. Just a few months later, even though your doors had to be closed, just like I knew you would, you found amazing ways to keep other doors open, to continue to connect with each other, and you've taught us all new ways to care for so many who were alone, who were suffering, who were afraid, and who still needed to know the comfort of God's love and presence through their connection with this holy community. And just about a year and a half ago, our dear Susan, like so many others before her, sent out from this holy place to answer God's call to serve God's church, was settling in for another year of formation, of discernment and learning in her, with her beloved community in Austin. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but I wonder if learning to communicate on Zoom was even part of her curriculum. Then, just a few months later, her world changed too. She had to be ready to open herself to new ways of formation, new ways of growing and learning within her community, even while staying distant, new ways of trusting in God's call to her to embrace love and not fear. I think it is so wonderful that 
as the world begins to slowly open up again, and as we are able to come inside this space that we all love, we are here to celebrate Susan's ordination to that ancient and holy order of the diaconate. Susan has been called, and we all most certainly agree to serve God in a deeper way. And she has responded to that call. As our world opens up, Susan is back, and she's ready. I'm very, very sure of it, to stand forever in that place of radical servanthood, which, as Henry Nouwen wrote so well, reveals to all of us the gentle presence of our compassionate and loving God in the midst of a broken world. I really think that it is the best news that Susan is joining us in a whole new world, maybe a whole new church even, where we will continue to discover new ways to respond to God's call to service, to respond to God's call to love that includes all. After all, that's the call of a deacon, to stand, as I've often heard quoted in several places, on the edge of the inside, to help us all see the needs and the concerns of the world just outside our doors and sometimes right along our path. Certainly a deacon is called to model in her own life that servant ministry, but she will also remind us that we are all called to be servants, that stepping into a life of service is where God is calling all of us. Several years ago now, I had the great pleasure of accompanying a group of students from Birmingham Southern who were led by my husband David on a month-long trip to South Africa to observe firsthand what post-apartheid life in that country was like. It just so happened that we arrived there about a month after the death of Nelson Mandela, and there were signs of national mourning everywhere we went. One Friday morning, we went to the Episcopal Cathedral in Cape Town for Eucharist. Every Friday morning when he was at home, the celebrant would be Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And we were all hoping to be with this holy man who had led his people through such a very hard time of reconciliation once apartheid was over. And who especially, during this time of mourning for South Africans, was a source of love and encouragement. Well, he was there, and about 20 or 30 of us stood in a circle around the altar as he celebrated. After the service ended, after he stood for quite a, some time having his picture taken again and again as he talked with the students, he invited David and me to walk with him to a restaurant nearby where every Friday morning he shares breakfast with anyone who is free to come. As we walked across the very crowded sidewalk and the very busy street, everyone who saw him greeted him with warm smiles, cheers, and waves. Their love for this man who cared so for them was so obvious. But what I saw on their faces that morning was certainly a response, but also a reflection of what I saw on his own face. God's presence, God's love, God's care for all God's people. As we continued toward the restaurant, we encountered a very tall man coming the other way. Bishop Tutu stopped and greeted this man very warmly and then introduced us. This man was the former mayor of Cape Town, and he and Bishop Tutu became friends during the time in Cape Town where there were many demonstrations both for and against apartheid in the streets. Bishop Tutu told us, I call him my periscope. During these demonstrations, he would walk alongside me to keep me safe and would look ahead for what was happening next than where my, my attention needed to be. 
Now, as you probably know, Bishop Tutu is just about my height, or maybe even a little shorter. His friend made the perfect companion to help him in that moment to lead and safely guide his people, not only through the crowds they encountered that right in front of them that day, but also in the days to come to discover how together they could lead and care the, in the best way for all the people of Cape Town and therefore all of South Africa during a very intense and difficult time. For her ordination today, Susan chose to have us read from Luke about that moment when the disciples are having a discussion about who would be counted as the greatest. And Jesus reminds them that the one who is actually the greatest is the one who serves, the one who walks alongside, the perfect companion who kindly and prayerfully looks for ways to lead and care for all in the name of love. So, just as we just promised we'd do, now we watch and pray as Susan takes on her call to an ordained life of servant ministry, as she promises to walk alongside us as our companion wherever that journey takes us, to love and guide us as together we face the life of faith, for we should also remember that we are all called, wherever God has placed us, to live our lives as one who serves. Not long ago, as I was thinking about this day in your life, Susan, and this moment when you take another step in God's call to you, I found these words on an index card that I wrote down years ago. We are called to love with joyful abandon. We are called to act with fearless courage and utter dedication to will God's will, all without fanfare. This is the life hidden with Christ in God. It's the gift of God's Holy Spirit that calls us. Susan, you are called to love with joyful abandon. You are called to act with fearless courage in utter dedication to will God's will, all without fanfare. This is the life hidden with Christ in God. It is the gift of God's Holy Spirit that calls you. So, Susan, finally, our dear, dear friend, as we leave this place this evening, it will be your voice we hear from the back of the nave, calling us to love with joyful abandon, to live a life of transformation, a life of service, a life of love, as we follow you, our beloved guide and companion. And believe me, Susan, we are more than ready to follow you out into the world. Amen. Let us now rehearse our common faith as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. My sister, every Christian is called to follow Jesus Christ, serving God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. God now calls you to a special ministry of servanthood directly under your bishop. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are, call, you are to serve all people, particularly the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. As a deacon in the church, you are to study the Holy Scriptures, to seek nourishment from them, and to model your life upon them. You are to make Christ and his redemptive love known by your word and example to those among whom you live and work and worship. You are to interpret to the church the needs, concerns, and hopes of the world. You are to assist the bishop and priests in public worship and in the ministration of God's word and sacraments. And you are to carry out other duties assigned to you from time to time. <laughs> At all times, your life and teaching are to show Christ's people that in serving the helpless, they are serving Christ himself. My sister, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to the life and work of a deacon. I believe I am so called. Do you now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. Will you be faithful in prayer and in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures? I will. Will you look for Christ and all others, being ready to help and serve those in need? I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life and that of your family or household or community in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to all people? I will. Will you in all things seek not your glory, but the glory of of the Lord Christ. I will. May the Lord by his grace uphold you in the service he lays upon you. Amen. Please stand. You're not going to need this paper. I'll give, okay. it back. I'll give it back to you. <laughs> From heaven shine.
O oh God, most merciful Father, we praise you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, who took on himself the form of a servant and humbled himself, becoming obedient even to death on the cross. We praise you that you have highly exalted him and made him Lord of all, and that through him we know that whoever would be great must be servant of all. We praise you for the many ministries in your church and for calling this your servant to the order of deacons. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Susan. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant, to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you. As your son came not to be served, but to serve, may this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Carefully turn around, mm -hmm. very, very carefully. Wants to dress you up. Susan. <laughs> I just want to cry for a minute. You can go ahead. You can cry for a minute. Okay, I'm good. We allow I'm that good. in here. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Receive this Bible as a sign of the, your authority to proclaim God's word and assist in the ministration of the holy sacraments. Thank you. Greet your newest deacon in the church. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's right. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. <laughs> peace. Oh, peace. Thank you. Peace. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's a beautiful peace. <laughs> Once again, delighted that y'all are here for this incredible moment in the life of the church. I um, encourage you um, to support Susan's ministry um, as we establish a discretionary fund for her when, um, as you walk out, there'll be an offering plate. Um, everyone is welcome to receive communion. Uh, there'll be, um, you can come to the rail and, and you'll, you'll come forward and then exit the sides. We'll have um, two people communing at both 
um, on both sides. Uh, we'll have just bread um, today, and if you have a gluten allergy, um, just let one of the priests know, and there's a, there'll be a fifth station, um, and that person will come and give you um, a gluten-free host. Welcome. You say it? Yeah. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to all. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me said that thou The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promise to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
are the gifts of God for the people of God. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him. For so come, you who have
us, let us pray together the prayer after communion. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Susan may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with her may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 